Tonight, as more coronavirus cases pop up around the country, hear how a school district is being proactive to make sure none of their students get infected. And two Democratic candidates become the front runners. We break down all that happened on Super Tuesday. Plus, record turnout in Bear County, but a big mishap when it was time for the results. The details on what went wrong. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A 70 year old man in Houston, in a suburb of Houston rather, has become the first Texan to test positive for the novel coronavirus outside of quarantine. That patient is a resident of Fort Bend County who had just returned from traveling abroad. The Texas Department of State Health Services released a statement saying the test was performed at a lab in Houston. Results have to be sent on to the CDC for confirmation. If the case is confirmed by the CDC, it would be the 12th case of COVID-19 here in Texas. 11 patients who were quarantined at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland are receiving treatment here locally. Governor Greg Abbott and the Department of State Health Services will hold a press conference tomorrow on the state's testing capabilities for that virus. As the coronavirus concerns continue to spread, a local school district says it is being proactive. One of the ways East Central ISD is taking action is by having a company called Germ Blast disinfect the district's buildings and school buses. Our Tiffany Huertas has a look at what other measures the school is taking to keep students, st students, staff and teachers all safe. The chemicals that we use today certainly can kill coronavirus. The company Germ Blast demonstrates how they kill germs. Some school districts do a really good job, like East Central, of cleaning their buses every day. And there are some that they don't clean them at all. So we have to clean first, of course. We have to remove all the trash. Madsen says it can take 15 to 20 minutes to clean a school bus. Depending on the environment, we'll spray a hydrogen peroxide-based chemical or we'll spray an isopropanol, which is an alcohol-type uh, chemical. Both of them are food grade. Both of them are uh, completely non-toxic. The company works with 150 school districts in Texas. Madsen says since the news of the coronavirus broke, their phones have been ringing off the hook. It might be time to prepare, but it's not time to worry. I wasn't too worried about it of course because it started out overseas but the kids get a little worried and so I think this is going to really help put the kids minds at ease. East Central ISD has been working with Germ Blast for three years. The company visits the district's buildings once a month. The district says it will increase Germ Blast visits over the next few months. East Central ISD says it's keeping track of the coronavirus through the local health department, the Texas Department of Health Services and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The district has also placed signs in schools with different messages, including reminding students to wash their hands for at least 20 seconds. We have now hand sanitizers at every serving line, uh, every cafeteria here in the district. Um, our teachers are going to start getting uh, disinfectant wipes uh, more frequently now. East Central ISD says schools will continue as long as it's deemed safe. I think, you know, we're doing everything that we can do. And so um, just as long as we're preventing it to the best of our ability, that's all we can do. Germ Blast says they also use steam at 360 degrees that can kill bacteria. It is used to clean helmets, shoulder pads, or places difficult to clean like buckets. Myra. All right, thanks, Tiffany. More than a quarter of a million Bear County voters cast a ballot in the March primary. The elections office said that is a record breaker, but it also led to some problems. Results came in much later than we're used to seeing. Elections Administrator Jackie Kalanen says that's because the county's tabulation system crashed three times. Even with vendor support available on site last night, results were not made public until well after midnight. When asked about whether that software can handle a possible surge in voters come November, here's what Kalanen had to say. I would like to say yes, but I think that's one question that I, I can't answer. More than 113,000 people voted yesterday. 139,000 early and absentee votes were cast ahead of Tuesday. Let's take a look at a breakdown of voters by age here in Bear County. Here are some of those numbers. Right now we've got 5.3% of voters 18 to 24. 24 to 34 year olds made up about 10%, 11% really of the vote. 34 to 44 year olds 12.8%, 14.5% of voters were 45 to 54, 20% 55 to 64, and those 65 and older made up the largest share of total primary voters with 36.6%. 
Nine races now heading to runoffs. Here is a list of all of those races. It includes U.S. Congressional District 23 on the Republican side. The race for Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3 also on the Republican side. And the race for Bear County Constable for Precinct 2 on the Democratic side, plus many others. The runoff election is scheduled for May 26th. And of course, the presidential primary was being watched closely last night. That was the big contest. Coming up a little bit later in the show, our Steve Spreester talks to a political science professor about those results and what comes next. The search for a murder suspect ends with the discovery of a man's body. A man tries to stop an armed robber when he's attacked by his partner in crime. And officers pull a man from a burning truck just in time. Here's tonight's Nine at Nine. The search for a San Antonio murder suspect is now over. San Antonio police confirming today a body discovered last night on the city's south side is 42 year old Andrew Munoz. He had been on the run since Friday after police say he kidnapped his ex girlfriend Maricela Cadena last week. Two days later, he shot and killed her inside of a subway restaurant. According to the medical examiner, Munoz died of a gunshot wound to the head. We don't know whether it was self inflicted. An armed robbery in Houston caught on camera. The victim says the whole altercation happened fast. It started when he was pumping gas and a man put a gun in his face saying he was going to kill him. The victim says he tried to wrestle that gun from the man. That's when a second suspect jumped out of a car and pointed a gun at him. The man was shot in the leg while running away. He was not seriously hurt. Tennessee under a state of emergency after the deadliest tornado in seven years. Two dozen people were killed and hundreds of buildings were destroyed by the storms early yesterday morning. The National Weather Service still surveying the damage. With just seconds to spare, New Jersey state troopers pull a driver from a burning tractor trailer. The rescue was caught on police body cam. The trooper was in the middle of a traffic stop on the interstate when he says the big rig went off the road and burst into flames. He drove quickly to that scene, sprinted to the truck's cab. The trooper and another officer were able to pull the man to safety moments before that big rig exploded. The driver was hospitalized with only minor injuries. Here at home, a jury finds a local woman guilty of intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault. Rosalinda Olalde was involved in a crash that killed the driver and critically injured his passengers. The defense attorney tried to blame the victim, saying he caused the crash by failing to stop before driving onto the 1604 access road. Prosecutors were quick to challenge that argument. Their argument, there's only one person responsible for the crash, and it wasn't the victim. According to testimony, Olalde was going 80 miles an hour at the time of the crash, and her blood alcohol level was 0.18 more than twice the legal limit. Olalde faces up to 20 years in prison. Amazon is skipping South by Southwest because of coronavirus. The move follows Facebook and Twitter's decisions to back out of the annual gathering in Austin. South by Southwest is scheduled to take place March 13th through the 22nd and features music, technology, and entertainment. Meanwhile, in Japan, stores are dealing with shortages of toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and face masks. This because of people stocking up due to coronavirus fears. Police in Australia are searching for this man, who's believed to have stolen a Versace necklace off a mannequin using a fishing rod. Video shows the man on a sidewalk acting suspiciously and carrying a fishing pole. Police say he is a patient thief. It took him nearly three hours to steal the jewelry. The necklace is said to be worth about $700. A disturbing sight in Missouri, more than a thousand birds killed after apparently getting caught up in thunderstorms. Animal control officers reached out to the Missouri Department of Conservation. The department says high winds and lightning were likely to blame. There were residents uh, that were seeing and hearing these birds fall from the sky. To read more about these nine stories, head to ksat.com. Katie Blake is with us tonight. It was crisper. It was cooler after that rain. Yes. It'd be nice to see some more of that. <laughs> I know. I had a couple of folks because we saw those lines coming in from the west. A couple of folks on Instagram were like, all I heard was like one rumble of thunder. And I think that's pretty much all I heard here too. Kind of the stronger storms and the more severe storms were off to our north this morning. But we did start off the day 
with a little bit of rain. This is at five o'clock in the morning. That broken line of storms got to town uh, right about six o'clock this morning, and you'll see it come through here on the time lapse. A nice little burst of rain that added up to nearly half an inch of rain at the airport here in San Antonio. 60 the morning low up to just 70 this afternoon, but that's pretty close to average for this time of year. Skies are continuing to clear out this evening and tomorrow. We've got a lot of sunshine heading your way. Not a ton of widespread severe weather with those storms that moved through this morning and no one's complaining about that, but there were a couple of storm reports here locally, uh, mainly just some wind damage out in Uvalde County up to closer to Concan that's north of Highway 90 and then closer to Bear County up near Bolverde Timberwood Park and damage uh, wind report damage there and also some hail up closer to Bernie. Those were that's where a couple of those cells were just a little bit stronger, able to produce some hail and also some damaging winds. But look at the storm reports that drape all the way from East Texas across the deep south. Uh, not only reports of hail damaging winds through portions of Mississippi and Alabama as well, but also some flooding issues there. Uh, the ground is very saturated across that part of the country and the rain has continued to fall for much of the day today. Still some uh, moderate to heavy rainfall falling across parts of the deep south and back here in Texas. And the reason for all of this active weather from here across the deep south is because of this surface low pressure system that has developed that moved across our area today and now will continue to move off to the east, taking a lot of this rainfall with it. But we've got the wraparound rain here uh, from Houston up to Dallas. A lot of rain falling now up near Bryan College Station in, in East Texas, but this is all on its way out. That low pressure system will continue to move east by the time you get up in the morning completely sunny skies. We're going to have a beautiful day on Thursday, and we really don't have any other weather systems coming in here Friday or as we even get into the weekend. So the weather will be staying uh, fairly quiet for the next couple of days. Coming up here in just a few minutes, we do have a pretty strong wind kicking tonight. We'll talk about that. Get you ready for the rest of the week and the weekend, and we'll take a look at temperatures. It is going to be feeling a lot like spring out there as we head into the weekend, Myra. All right, thanks, Katie. You're welcome. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. Yesterday was a major contest in the presidential race, Super Tuesday. There were some surprises and some upsets, but now we have a better picture of where the candidates stand. Our Steve Spreester talked with Dr. David Crockett, a political science professor at Trinity University, to break down the results and what comes next in this election year. This is called Dissecting Super Tuesday. So what did we learn last night? We learned that the party can move very quickly, coalescing behind a candidate if it really wants to. Uh, so it was a pretty remarkable turn of events from uh, over the last two weeks to see a pretty decisive night for uh, Joe Biden. When we say Biden won states, that's a kind of a misnomer because yes, it's, it all, it's really all about delegates at this point, especially yes. when you're talking about Democrats. Explain right. that a little bit. too. So in the general election, you win states because most states uh, allocate their electoral votes winner take all. But in the nomination process, you don't really win a state. You do win delegates. So we call someone winning the state if they win a majority. But the fact of the matter is you could actually win a majority of the popular vote. And if someone is two points behind you, they may get the same number of delegates you do. So the real metric to use is not so much win or lose, the up or down, but how many delegates did you win relative to the other person? How far ahead did you get in that one state? So if two people get 21 and 20 delegates, the guy with 21 won, uh, not by much in the delegate count. When we talk about a contested convention, 
We're basically talking about nobody getting enough delegates to clinch the nomination. Right. And then what happens? Well, you'll have round one of voting, and so all the delegates vote the way they're pledged to vote, and no one gets the necessary majority to clinch the nomination. You go to round two, and the rules differ in the two parties, but in the Democratic Party, round two is where the seven to 800 superdelegates who are all sitting office holders and party leaders statewide and nationwide come in to play. That, of course, will raise the total number of delegates at stake, which means the majority you need will be a little bit higher than it was before. But you go to round two and see if you can get a majority that way. And you can do this all day long. I mean, there have been, I think the record bad convention was the Democratic Party in 1924, which had 103 ballots before they finally settled. It took them a couple of weeks to figure this out. Do you see a contested convention happening this year? The more people bow out, the less likely it is. Um, you've got a couple of hundred delegates who would now be free agents. But what we want to see is it is proportional allocation. But it's only kind of proportional, because if no one breaks 15%, then people who do get a larger share than they actually got. So if Joe Biden does this for the next few weeks and continues to increase the lead, if you end up with a two-person race, it's more likely that one of those two will squeeze over the 1990 line, right. and we won't have one. We'll keep you posted on what happens next, as well as keep you up to date on all election coverage this year in our Vote 2020 newsletter. It's sent out every Tuesday via email. You can sign up right now at ksat.com slash newsletters. Let's take a look at today's top stories. The Supreme Court is deciding on an abortion access case out of Louisiana. Today, the justices heard arguments concerning a law that requires doctors performing abortions to obtain admitting privileges from a nearby hospital. Chief Justice John Roberts may hold the deciding vote. The case marks the first time President Trump's nominees, conservative justices Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, have heard on an abortion related dispute in the high court. The House Homeland Security Committee has requested U.S. Secret Service protection for all 2020 Democratic presidential candidates. It comes after two anti-dairy protesters rushed the stage at a Joe Biden rally in Los Angeles last night. A House Homeland Security chairman is calling on congressional leaders to immediately begin the process of determining whether the candidates need Secret Service protection. Biden and Bernie Sanders appear to meet several criteria for it. Katie is back with us tonight to talk about what the rest of the week is going to look like. Nice. We were talking about that potential for storms that rolled in early this morning. We've been talking about that since late last week. Now things are going to settle down just a little bit. It could have been the perfect storm yesterday with all that election coverage. Thankfully, those storms didn't come through uh, late last night. Uh, looking at live cam right now, there's a little shake to our camera and I can see just a few clouds out there. Skies have really been clearing out very nicely this evening and we've got temperatures in the 50s. 52 at Bernie stage, 56 at the airport, 55 at Randolph. We've got some cooling down to do this evening and it's feeling pretty chilly out there right now because we've got a pretty strong north northwest wind in place. Our system wind speeds right now are at about 15 to 25 miles per hour and that's where they're going to stay overnight. So don't be surprised if maybe you hear some things moving around outside, maybe tree limbs scratching against the window or the side of your house or something like that, because we'll keep those sustained wind speeds 15 to 25 for much, uh, much of the night and even through tomorrow morning, a little bit of a breeze out there to greet you. So you will want a jacket when you step out on your Thursday morning. By tomorrow afternoon, those winds will become light just at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and we've got a beautiful day in store tomorrow. By the afternoon, temperatures will be climbing into the low to mid 70s with again winds becoming pretty light and then a cool evening tomorrow with just a few high thin clouds beginning to filter in. We're going to see a lot of those high clouds over the next week or so just because of what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. You'll notice more of those cirrus clouds Friday, but really nice weather here as we head into the weekend. We'll pick up just a few more clouds Saturday, still a mostly sunny day. Don't forget we spring forward, which means we lose an hour of sleep Saturday night on Sunday. More clouds, maybe a stray shower or sprinkle possible. Monday looks like our best chance at an isolated shower over the next seven days, but it's really not that great. If you're north of San Antonio, you could see a little passing shower on Monday, but check out these temperatures. We are staying very spring like with temperatures pushing 80 by early next week. 
Let's head to KSAT.com right now to find out what is trending tonight with All RJ right, Marcus. Myra, uh, yes, a pretty busy day, not as busy as uh, last night, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, it's no election day around here. <laughs> no, but, but uh, still a uh, pretty cool day across our website. And we start first with an adorable video alert. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I did not write that headline. That <laughs> headline was there. A uh, San Antonio senior center has channeled Ferris Bueller in the remake of Twist and Shout. Yeah. All right. So yeah. this is the, the parade scene. The parade right? scene, yeah. Okay. The uh, infamous parade scene, the classic parade scene where Ferris, of course, is uh, goes through. It's Chicago, right? Yeah, he goes he's through, up like, on the flow. Yeah, yeah, he's lip syncing the song and right, all that. Right, right. So this group actually put together this video, and you can see behind me, they have all sorts of different <laughs> shots. Uh, very well pulled together here. They got the band in there. They have all sorts of uh, different places across the city that they shot. So very cool idea there from these uh, seniors and uh, I do want to say they are from the Adante the senior living center it's part of the Segura living center location so pretty cool stuff there. looks like they yeah. had fun yeah absolutely they just did it for kicks <laughs> <Great> right <laughs> yeah great stuff uh, for them to put together all right moving on here uh, st a lot of people still here talking of course about the Spurs win last night and not because they won which is which is awesome. Yeah, but, which is uh, key these yes, days. Yeah, they need every win they could get. Uh, it's because Tim Duncan was the head coach. That first got time lost in the as shuffle a little bit. starting head coach, right? Yes, first time. Start to finish. Yes, from start to finish. He took over for Pop when Pop was ejected earlier this season. But this was the first time he was named uh, acting head coach before tip-off. Went wire gotcha. to wire and got the win for the Spurs. And my favorite part about this is that after the game, uh, he actually did post game availability. I did not think he was going to do this. Yeah, it, it yeah. buried in all the election right. day yes. tweets last night. I saw that, <laughs> that a lot of yeah. people were shocked that, right. oh my gosh, he actually yeah. talked to the media. He's only talked to the, like, publicly twice since he took over as an assistant coach. One was at Tony Parker's retirement, so he kind of had to do that. And then yesterday, um, and he actually channeled his inner pop. Someone asked him, why did you come out of retirement? And Tim was like, are we going to talk about the game? Or is this going to be an interview for something else? Good stuff I there. I feel like they have <laughs> some of those traits in common. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's just like from osmosis, being Probably. around each other for Probably. years. Yeah. Or if yeah. they're just those kind of yeah, guys. Yeah, definitely. So uh, <laughs> cool stuff there. If you want to hear Tim speak, which we rarely get to hear him speak, uh, head over to a website, ksat.com. All right, last story here. Myra, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Um, Okay, so what pops into your mind when if I told you chicken and pickle? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say chicken and pickles. <laughs> chicken and pickle, yes. Um, all right, this is actually an entertainment venue that's opening okay. up on the northwest side off of UTSA Boulevard. I know, this is apparently a thing, pickleball is uh, become kind of a popular pickle thing. Ball. Pickleball, yes. Okay, pickleball. <laughs> so, yes. Now, is this a place it just is. Just to go play it, Yeah, ball? they have, uh, I think there's like 11 pickleball courts, and you could also, uh, of course, eat there. They have a full-service bar, so it's like a whole like entertainment venue out there. And again, it's off of UTSA Boulevard. Pickleball has become such a thing. It has. Is it? This is what the college kids are doing now? You know, actually, not I think... not playing hacky I'm, sack anymore? No, truly, I think uh, there's like a big pickleball movement yeah, right, among right. people who are retired. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I said, oh, it's like mini yeah. tennis, right? And somebody yes. quickly the other day said, no, there's so much more right, to it. Right, right. It's like a mix of <laughs> wiffle ball, racquetball, tennis. Yeah. We got all sorts of stuff going on with I this I mean, I've pickleball. played mini tennis, but somebody was quick to correct me that it's not yeah. all that's yeah. happening. Yeah. So um, if you guys want to find out more about this new venue that should be opening up at the end of uh, like mid to the end of April. Oh then, wow! Yeah, so it's really soon. Pretty soon, yeah, we're gonna get our pickleball on over here. Chicken and pickle, <laughs> y'all. Okay. Thanks, RJ. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Myra. We'll be right back.
That's all our time here on KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night.